I want you to think about how you got here today. If you're like me, you drove, or maybe you took the bus, or you biked, or you walked. The problem with a lot of these modes of transportation is that they rely on burning gasoline in an engine to move a vehicle forward. This process, re uh, this process releases carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change and global warming. In fact, about a pound of carbon dioxide is emitted for every mile that we drive. So imagine you're like cruising down the freeway and every couple of minutes you take one of those five pound bags of flour and just chuck it out the window behind you. But this flour also melts the ice caps. <laughs> now, it doesn't have to be this way. We have the technology today to power your car using hydrogen gas, using a device called a fuel cell to extract electrical energy from a chemical reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen in the air we breathe. And we can do this all for the low, low price of $58,000. <laughs> That's more expensive than a Tesla. Now, there's some advantages. Fuel cell cars you can refuel in about five minutes. Batteries take a couple of hours to fully charge. And the 300-mile driving range of a Toyota Mirai is a lot longer than all but the best long-range Teslas. But still, 58 grand is a pretty hefty price to pay. Now, one of the reasons these things cost so much is we actually have to oversize the cells and use expensive materials to get enough power to push the car forward. Here at Berkeley Lab, I do computer simulations to understand what limits the performance of these cells and how we can optimize them. And we found that water in particular plays a very important role. In the middle of every fuel cell is a thin plastic sheet called a membrane that keeps the hydrogen and oxygen gas separate and allows us to control the reaction. The membrane needs to stay wet to do its job. If it dries out, the cell dies of thirst. But we can't let too much water accumulate in the cell either. If it does, the cell floods, and the hydrogen and oxygen can't get to where they need to go, and the cell essentially drowns. My simulations predict how much water is too much, how little is too little, and where in the cell it's produced, so that we can test different water management strategies and optimize their performance. By doing this, we can get more horsepower with fewer cells. We can also test new inexpensive membrane materials that might absorb or release water a little bit differently. This will allow us to bring the cost of fuel cell cars down and put more of them on the road. And if we're successful, we'll be able to stop throwing trash out our window whenever we drive, and we can slow or even stop the harmful effects of global warming.